All right, with this forecast video update on this Friday, February the 18th, and this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you all had a wonderful Friday, and I have to say it's been really just a pretty warm day we had across the state, just like yesterday. yesterday. But I have to say that here in Orlando, we actually did hit a record high temperature today in the upper 80s. And I think this is the first time we have seen temperatures in the upper 80s for 2022. And that may have to go back since, I guess, uh, about last fall or so. Maybe early last fall is when we, is, is when we last seen temperatures uh, that warm. But we got a, we got a weak front that's going to move in as we head into the overnight, which, which will make our weather very comfortable as our temperatures will cool down slightly into the 70s, uh, both Saturday and Sunday. But the early taste of summer heat will be on the way as we head into next week, which I'll explain more about that here in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and take a look at those high temperatures we have seen again, once again, of course, right here in our state. And as you can see right here in Orlando, well, just before four o'clock, it was around 81 degrees. But again, that was not the high temperature. The high, uh, the record high temperature here in the metro only got, got up to about, again, 87 degrees this afternoon. Uh, looks like uh, Titusville did hit uh, record heat with temperatures today around 84 degrees. And also, if we go farther up towards uh, Daytona Beach and Palm Coast, you folks uh, did see highs in the low 80s this afternoon as well. But it was a little cooler if we go farther to the north and west, uh, up towards the villages in Ocala, where temperatures mostly stayed in the upper 70s. And there have been, there have been a few showers that, uh, that developed earlier today in some of our northwestern counties. But... I expect the rain chances to stay really low here in the next couple of days. So, so anybody that does get a shower uh, for both Saturday and Sunday will be, again, just a quick one at about 10 to 20 percent. But I expect things to be mainly dry again for your President's Day, President's Day holiday weekend. So just uh, FYI. But of course, our front is still up to the north of here. And like I have said just a few minutes ago, it will make its way through central Florida. Uh, during the overnight and perhaps as we get into uh, daybreak tomorrow morning, because that's when temperatures will start to uh, slightly cool things down as we get into Saturday and Sunday, which you're going to see at the highs for the cooler high temperatures here in just a minute with future cast. So be sure to uh, stay tuned for that. All right. Uh, temperatures right now at this hour, this 8 p.m. hour, that is. And right now here in Orlando, we are still seeing Pretty warm conditions out there where we are basically sitting at about 80 at this hour. Right now, temperatures are in the upper 70s in places such as Kissimmee, Sanford, and Daytona Beach. And there are mid-70s in Titusville up towards Palm Coast. And temperatures are starting to cool things down a little bit uh, over around the Ocala area, where, as you can see, you're, you're mostly sitting at about 72 degrees. So if you had any plans for the rest of this evening, uh, everything should be looking great. But just note that once you step outside, it is still kind of a little humid out there because, you know, we're still dealing with this warm air. But like it's but a, like I said before, which I said that uh, from the past couple of videos, that, that if you're a big fan of cool weather, that is coming, but it's not going to last much longer. And speaking of slightly cool temperatures, let's go ahead and uh, take a look and see how cool the, uh, the temperatures are going to be for Saturday and Sunday with Futurecast. And before we take a look at that, if you're just coming into Facebook Live on this Friday evening, again, I do not mind if you could go ahead and share this live Facebook feed with your Facebook followers because you know my motto, and that is uh, sharing is caring. And before, as always, be uh, before we get into... Uh, the temperatures for for the for the holiday weekend. I am going to go ahead and share this uh, live Facebook feed to the other Facebook pages, group pages that is. So if you can, so if you, if you all can give me just uh, about a few minutes or so, then we will move on with the rest of the uh, update. And uh, by the way, uh, in case if you uh, didn't see the uh, the, the uh, Facebook Live video that I did early this afternoon, I did a uh, broadcast from Animal Kingdom, because that's where I was pretty much throughout the day, of the uh, new daytime show called Disney Kite Tales. So if you haven't uh, got, 
if you haven't get it, if you haven't uh, gotten to watch the stream uh, earlier today, you can uh, watch the replay whenever you get a chance. And I have to say the, that the uh, kite show uh, over at Animal Kingdom is uh, is really awesome. I actually really do enjoy it. So I highly recommend again just check out the video and maybe one of these days you uh, may be able to see that in person when you come to visit uh, Walt Disney World uh, in the future. And I just saw that Mike Pierce is in the house, just uh, just as of now, and it's good to have you, sir. So you're checking in from your home in San Diego. Well, I know you've been, uh, you know, traveling uh, business related uh, recently, but I see you're back home now. So I well, hope everything is uh, going well with you at uh, at home with your family. And as always, thank you for stopping by and saying hi. I really also do appreciate it. All right, uh, sorry about that again, folks. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, temperatures, high temperatures we're expecting for the next couple of days with future casts. So first of all, heading into the rest of this evening and into the overnight, we're expecting temperatures to be mostly mild in the way of 60s here in the viewing area. So it may not be until by around uh, around uh, the, day, uh, the daybreak hours in the morning that we'll see the front move through central Florida, and that's going to allow temperatures to slightly cool down from the mid-60s down into the upper 50s for some. But as we head into the afternoon, we're expecting temperatures uh, to mostly hit the low 70s, especially in our inland locations. We're talking about uh, Orlando, Sanford, Ocala, and the villages. So it looks like th these are the only areas where highs will only get into the low 70s as we head into your Saturday and some other areas, especially over towards Interstate 95 could remain just a little cooler, but not bad in the way of 60s. 
So again, if you've got any outdoor plans uh, for tomorrow, at least to kick off the holiday weekend, uh, you should be fine. But maybe I'd rather, uh, or, or maybe I should say, I recommend if you live along the coast of I-95, where temperatures will only stay in the 60s tomorrow, just to grab a light jacket. But other than that, we're not expecting anything major as far as chilly or cold snaps go, since the front is going to be weak once it moves through our viewing area uh, by daybreak in the morning. All right, now heading into the evening hours uh, tomorrow, if you got outdoor plans, you may need a jacket for all of you in Central Florida because, as you can see, the temperatures are going to start dropping from the 70s down into the 50s right here in our state. And as far as our lows go, for early Sunday morning, it looks like uh, if you live just to the north and west of Orlando, so I'm talking like the villages in Ocala, you may start off with low temperatures, a little chilly, possibly in the mid to upper 40s to begin with early Sunday, and perhaps the same may go for Kissimmee and the Lakeland areas, but other locations like in Orlando and North will see temperatures start off in the low to mid 50s. So, so, so if you're heading to church uh, early Sunday morning, uh, before you leave your house, uh, you may want to grab a jacket or a sweater because once you, once you step outside early that morning, yet it, it is going to be feeling a little chilly. But as we head into the afternoon, we will start to warm up into the mid-70s in some spots here in our state. So we're talking about uh, 74 for the high on Sunday in Orlando. Could see a high around 76 in Lakeland, 73 in Kissimmee, and maybe some lower 70s over in Titusville and Daytona Beach. But it seems that Palm Coast may only get into the upper 60s uh, Sunday afternoon. And there could be highs in the low 70s uh, in places such as Sanford, the Villages, and Ocala. And yes, more sunshine is on the way, not just for the day on Saturday, but into the day on Sunday. So, again, if you got plants outdoors, then you should be in pretty good shape. And then as we get through the evening, temperatures will cool things down a little bit. So staying mild in the 60s between 6 and 8 right here in our state. And then as the clock ends all the way towards after midnight, late Sunday, and into the early morning of President's Day Monday, I think we'll see low temperatures uh, to begin uh, the holiday with maybe some upper 50s and low 60s but, but remember the cooler temperatures are not going to last much longer because they really i mean a really big warm-up will be on the way for most of next week as we again start to see an early taste of summer which we don't see that here in february all the time or every time but again it's part of all the climate changes we have been seeing recently in the world so yeah Okay, so before we have a look at the GFS, let's uh, go ahead and uh, look at the radar and see what's going, on, what's going on right now in Central Florida at this hour. And as you can see, most of us are quiet, but like I said just a little while ago, that uh, just this afternoon, there have been a couple of lines of showers that have formed ahead of the front uh, in portions of Flackler and Marion counties. But there is one little shower that is developing southwest of Ocala, but it's nothing uh, major. Uh, as far as the weather goes. And of course, over the past couple of days, we have seen a couple of spotty areas of showers in some locations in central Florida. But again, most of us have been mostly quiet like it is right now. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the GFS and see what's going to be happening as we get into the next uh, couple of weeks. We get into as we get close to uh, late February and as we get close to uh, start off the beginning of March. So we'll start off with with uh, President's President's Day Monday, and that's uh, February the 21st. And the weather here in Central Florida looks to stay mainly quiet uh, for the holidays. So if you're expecting to be outdoors with your friends or your families on your extra day off of school, at least for the kiddos or and if, for those of you that are planning on taking an extra day off of work, it uh, could be a pretty good day to do that uh, as we're expecting lots of sunshine. And if you look up towards the, up towards the uh, north and west, there is another storm system that maybe that might be developing in portions of the Mississippi Valley that may bring the uh, increasing chances for some showers and maybe even a few storms. But 
But I think that system is going to stay mainly up to the north and, not, and that will not affect us to begin uh, the work week next week, but also heading into the uh, President, President's Day holiday. And as we uh, have a look at those high temperatures, and as you can see, we'll start to uh, slightly warm things up a little bit. So we're talking about uh, temperatures uh, for some heading into the upper 70s and others maybe possibly heading into the low 80s. So upper 70s and low 80s will be our highs we'll call as we head into the day on President's Day. But with the rain that will be developing in the Mississippi Valley uh, due to that system, that is going to keep temperatures cooler, especially in Alabama, where only highs may not uh, get out of the 50s. So. All right. Uh, now, after the holiday weekend concludes, Heading into the day on Tuesday of next week, which is the uh, 22nd of February. And as you can see, weather-wise in Central Florida, things looks to, looks to uh, remain pretty dry, as we were expecting more in the way of mostly sunny skies. But if you notice over towards the coast, anywhere between Brevard and Miami-Dade counties, that there may be a few isolated straight coastal showers, but nothing major is, is, is a concern. So that's the good news. Again, all of that as to whether it's going to stay mainly up to the north where rain chances up around the Mississippi Valley will continue to stay on the high category. So, so yeah. And uh, for high temperatures next Tuesday, yep, that's when the 80s do come back. So we're talking about highs getting back into the low with some hitting the middle 80s as we head into that day. And with these middle 80s, again, that means that some places could even see uh, those numbers hit near record heat, like we have been seeing recently, like today and yesterday. So, so that's something we'll, we'll we'll be watching. But it looks like temperatures are going to start to warm things up uh, up towards the Mississippi Valley, where highs will be getting back into the 60s and even into the 70s. So, so, so early taste of taste of spring is on the way for the Mississippi Valley on Tuesday. But again, for here, we'll be feeling an early taste of summer. All right, now here is the middle of next week, which is uh, Wednesday, February the 23rd. And still, I'm expecting things to stay mainly quiet uh, with lots of sunshine here uh, across the entire state. Uh, again, if you live in southeastern Brevard County, according to what I'm seeing on the GFS, there could be a coastal shower. But again, I'm expecting any big rain chances here in the next several days. So all, that, all of that, again, will stay mainly up north or <laughs> up towards the Mississippi Valley region. And as we take a look at those high temperatures, and yet again, it will continue to get more warm as we head into Wednesday, as we will see most in most areas hitting into the middle 80s. But it is possible that some of you could see temperatures hit the upper 80s for the first time, like we kind of did here in Orlando, but not just for here, but other areas here in the viewing area, you could see temperatures for records in the upper 80s as we get into uh, midweek. So something, again, we'll be watching. And it's not just for here that we'll see temperatures that warm, but it seems that across portions of the extreme southeast side of Alabama, south central Georgia, and as far north as Charleston, South, Car south Carolina, temperatures may also reach the 80s, maybe for the first time for this year, if I'm not mistaken. So, so it could be a, a really warm uh a warm day Wednesday for the for the deep southeast, but with the uh, system that will still produce more rain across the Mississippi Valley region, the rest of the valley that is, uh, that is going to bring another front, and that's going to allow temperatures to drop from spring to a little bit a little bit like winter, so dropping from warm to cool with 50s and low 60s. Okay, so as we get into the day on Thursday, which is the 24th, and you can see on the GFS, we're still expecting more in the way of dry weather with uh, lots of sunshine. But as you can see that the rain chances are up around the valley will start to uh, weekend to an isolated chance. So so we, so may weekend from a 80% to a 30% coverage of showers up around that area. And again, that is ahead of the same front. They'll be dropping uh, to the southeast, but it will still be again uh, north of our state. And as we have a look at those high temperatures, and I believe once the front gets closer to the panhandle of Florida next Thursday, that may uh, start to weaken. And that means that we may not see a front move in uh, in the next several days after this one. 
So instead of seeing temperatures cooler, it is going to keep uh, warm as highs will be in the mid. Again, some places may even hit record highs in the upper 80s as we get into the day on Thursday of next week. So, yeah, that's why I've said summer may be arriving a little early for late February here in the state of Florida. Again, that, that, that doesn't happen that often here in winter. But again, when we get these climate changes, sometimes it could happen. And that's what we'll and that's what, what it will do as we get into those days. And as you can, and also if you go farther up to the north, it looks like temperatures may start to warm things up a little bit, especially if you go far north as Atlanta, where highs may start to feel more like spring again, as you know, as temperatures will get back into the 60s and maybe some hitting at or near 70 degrees as we approach that day. But still, more cooler and chilly weather continues with these uh, higher cover, uh, higher coverages of rain in the Mississippi Valley. So Birmingham and Jackson will see temperatures cool and chilly. And that's mostly in the way of 40s, upper 40s, that is, and even into the 50s. All right, now heading into a week from today, that is uh, next Friday, February the 25th, and still no signs of any bigger rain chances to arrive in central florida so again we're going to keep things dry with plenty of sunshine to end the work week next week and farther north you go still the rain continues but not as widespread like it will be for the next uh, three days so the rain chances will, so the rain chances will be isolated uh, especially in mississippi and uh for temperatures on that day again it is it is it is going to continue to stay warm and humid so we're talking about mid to upper 80s to remain in the forecast as we get into next Friday. But it is possible that some of you could see temperatures hit records either near or at 90 degrees. So that's possible we could see that by the end of next week. And it's kind of too early to see temperatures get warm like that. But that's what we'll have to uh, that's what we'll have that's what we'll have to watch closely. But if you notice the farther north you go, temperatures will be looking pretty comfortable, uh, especially from Mississippi and points east where highs will only get into the upper 70s and even into the low 80s, especially in South Georgia as we approach that day. But if you notice right here in portions of central Mississippi, that could be another front and that's going to allow temperatures to drop from spring back to winter. So dropping from the 70s back down into the 40s. Uh, if that is the case. But again, it's mainly just to the north and west of the far northwest of here, where you see those little blue colors over here. So we'll, we'll wait and see. All right, now taking you to next uh, next weekend, almost at next Wednesday, but I meant to say next weekend. This is uh, the final Saturday of February, and that's the 26th, and still... No signs of any bigger rain chances to see in central Florida as we're expecting things to stay mainly dry and sunny. But there is a system, another system, I believe, that may bring some scattered rain chances across most of the Mississippi Valley. So, again, we'll have to uh, keep an eye on that, but that could always change as we get closer. And it seems that the new front will start to drop uh, to the south and east, but still north of our state, as we're expecting for us ahead of it. Uh, remain in the low to mid 80s but behind it as it moves through the mississippi valley that's going to allow temperatures to get down a much cooler and a little chilly to end the month as there'll be temperatures in in the 40s and 50s all right now here is next sunday february the 27th and of course that'll be my birthday and weather wise here on that day it looks to stay mainly quiet in central florida with no storms or any any big rain chances to see so most of that will stay mainly just in the north and west in new orleans and perhaps around near jackson where there'll be again better chances for some rain and for temperatures that day it is going to start to cool things down a little bit so i believe there will be a second front and that i believe the second one it could be weaker instead of strong and once that comes through central florida by the day on sunday the 27th the 27th that's going to allow temperatures to slightly cool things down from the mid 80s down into the upper 70s and low 80s which makes it a little better for those of you that are not really big fans of summer heat 
So we'll have to wait and see, but you know that could always change. But the chilliness continues uh, for the Mississippi Valley as temperatures stay in the 40s and low 50s. But the exception is for South Georgia, where highs will only stay in the mid 60s, which isn't too bad. But still, it'll be much cooler outside and not as warm. All right, now as we head into the land of voodoo country, and this takes you to Monday, February the 28th, and I believe that's the last day of the month, and it seems that our rain chances may start to pick up a little bit, but still remain isolated, so we may call it for about a 30% coverage of, of, of some isolated showers that may form in portions of our state as we approach that day, but the heaviest of the rain will be mostly up to the north and west, as you can tell, stretching from Tallahassee all the way up towards Charleston. That could bring totals between one to two and a half inches uh, possible. And if that is the case, that may lead into the potential of uh, some minor flooding, if, if that is true. So that's something we'll watch. And as we uh, have a look at those high temperatures, and it looks like it's going to start to warm, it's war it's gonna start to warm up again after a day of slightly cool weather. So it seems that temperatures may start to get back into the mid-80s for, uh, for most of our viewing area as we get into the last day of the month but there'll be some there'll be some upper 70s if you go if you go farther to the north in areas such as ocala and jacksonville but farther north you go into the mississippi valley it will still remain pretty chilly in the way of 40s and low 50s All right, now as we head into the land of voodoo country, and that will take you to Tuesday, the first day of March. And right now the weather here looks to uh, be mostly dry in most areas, but the exception is for north and east of Orlando, where there may be a few isolated showers left over. But other than that, that system, they'll be bringing some big chances, chances of rain for the valley, will be mostly pushing up to the north and east, perhaps around the Carolinas and the Mid-Atlantic, if that is the case. So we'll have to wait and see. But our temperatures are going to start to cool uh, start to cool down again. So, so it looks like our temperature pattern may be turned into a roller coaster pattern by the time we head towards the last day of February and the first day of March, where we may see a day of cooler weather slightly, another uh, one day of warm weather, and then back to cool weather again. So that's uh, because of those cold fronts and behind it, that's going to allow temperatures to drop from the 80s down into the upper 60s and into the mid 70s as we head into that day. But again, all that chilliness will stay up north where temperatures for highs will be staying in the 40s and 50s for most of the Mississippi Valley region. If that is the case, but again, since that we're in the land of voodoo country, you know, things could likely change as we get closer. So I will definitely keep you guys posted. All right, now heading into Wednesday, the second day of March, and it looks like the weather here in the state remains dry with plenty of mostly sunny skies, and the same also continues for uh, the Mississippi Valley region. And as we uh, have a look at those high temperatures, and still, things, rem things remain slightly cooler in the way of low to mid-70s on the second day of March, so not bad to at least to get outside and enjoy some outdoor activities if you have some on that specific day. And if you notice up towards the north in the, Missis in the Mississippi Valley, uh, temperatures may start to uh, warm things up a bit as they, uh, as they, as it turns to the uh, upper 50s and into the mid 60s, if that is the case. But again, it's too early to say, so that's why I call it the land of voodoo, which means that that may change. Now here is two weeks from yesterday, and that is for Thursday, March 3rd. And most of us here in the state looks to stay mainly sunny and dry, but the exception is for the coast, the coast of Volusia County, where there may be a brief coastal shower or two. But again, I'm not expecting anything significant as far as big rain chances go. So, so things will look pretty good again for the for the first few days of the new month. And still temperatures looks to stay a little bit cooler, but not bad as we will be in the mid to upper 70s. Maybe some could flirt around at or near 80 degrees as we head into the third day of March. And even temperatures will start to warm things up a little more if you go towards the Mississippi Valley 
as there will be mainly in the way of 60s and perhaps some low 70s, especially if you're in, if you're in the Mobile area or perhaps around uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, and even New Orleans. So it could be a pretty nice day to uh, get outside and enjoy those spring-like temperatures, again, if the forecast is right. But again, too early to say, so we'll, we'll see. Okay, okay, so here is two weeks from today. That is uh, Friday, March 4th. Uh, Weather-wise, again, it looks to stay mainly dry with no big rain chances to see right here in central Florida. But the exception is right here down towards uh, Miami, where there'll be not bigger rain chances, but smaller rain chances. So we may, so there may be about a 30% chance for a few showers in Miami or around the West Palm Beach areas. But other than that, the rest of the southeast looks to stay mainly sunny and quiet. And as we... Uh, have a look at those temperatures, and it looks like we're going to start to warm back into the into the 80s again as we head into the first Friday of new month. And even there'll be more warm temperatures, but not as warm like it will be here. So instead of seeing 80s for the Mississippi Valley, it will start to warm up in the mid to upper 70s, which is not bad to get outside to, at least to enjoy the 70s, of course. So we'll see. All right, and then heading into the first uh, the first half of the first weekend of March, that is, uh, that's the 5th, the first Saturday of March, of course, and you can see, again, still no signs of any big rain chances to see right here in our state, but there is a weather maker that may try to develop from the north and west, and that could, or that could develop some showers around portions of Mississippi and Alabama and maybe a little far north, so that's, again, something we'll, we could watch, but again, just too, it's too early to say. But look what happens as we head into the 5th of March. Yes, it's going to turn more like early summer again, like we're going to see for most of next week. So, so instead of seeing 70s or low 80s, we're going to really warm things up into the mid to some, again, hitting into the upper 80s as we head into that day. Still kind of early, <clears throat> excuse me, still kind of early to see, again, temperatures get warm like that for this time of year. But uh, again, this is still part of these climate changes. So, you know, it could happen. But it'll be a little bit cooler if you go farther north where temperatures will remain in the 70s to maybe some in the low 80s. So still looking pretty good uh, for the first Saturday of March. And then here is the, uh, the last uh, trend here, which is uh, Sunday, March 6th. And again, still looking to, re to remain quiet here in central Florida with no bigger rain chances. So no, no, no higher rain chances here for the state in the next couple of weeks. And I have to say we could use some more, but again, this is still dry season and that's why we don't see a whole lot of rain every day. So that's why that we start to see rain ev almost every single day once we hand into wet season, which begins around late May. And of course that will go through, through the middle of October. So, so hopefully maybe we'll see some pretty good rain chances uh, very soon. But as of right now, in the couple in the next uh, couple of weeks, there's not a whole lot of that. But if you look to the north and west, there is again a disturbance that may form across portions of the valley that may fuel up a few showers. But the chances again stays at thirty percent or less, if that if that is correct. And then as we uh, take a look at those temperatures uh, for for the sixth, and yet it is still going to remain pretty warm and muggy as we're expecting as we're expecting to stay in the mid to upper 80s. And it's not just upper 80s that we may see both on the 5th and 6th of March, but it's possible that some isolated areas could see records hitting at or near 90 degrees as we head towards that day. But farther north you go, there is another front that will start to drop from the north to the south, but north of our state. And that's going to allow temperatures to really cool things down from the upper 70s down into the mid to upper 50s, especially along Interstate 20, but a little farther south, a little cooler, slightly in the way of 60s and maybe some in the low 70s, which isn't bad, of course. So there you pretty much have it there, guys. So what I'm gonna do right now is uh, go ahead and wrap up this live Facebook feed on this Friday evening. So I hope to see you all again starting on Monday evening, President's Day at 8 p.m. for another live weather update. So I hope you guys can join me then. And I will continue as always by posting more notes, more notes or updates on my blog and social media platforms 24-7. But in the meantime, I hope you all enjoy the President's Day holiday weekend. 
And remember to continue to stay safe by taking care of yourselves and each other. And God bless.